It is said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and in the case of our next guest, that's an understatement. Photographer Nigel Skeet has made a very successful career out of taking pictures of famous rock bands like Motley Crue, ACDC, and Metallica, among others. When he became aware of the homeless problem in his own community, he decided to photograph some of them and give them the full rock star treatment. The results were astounding. Attitudes changed, understanding and awareness increased, and a movement was born, the Homeless Rock Star Project. Nigel encourages people to look at the problem of homelessness with a fresh perspective by encouraging dialogue through the project. He's here to tell us what inspired him to act and to demonstrate how conversations can transform lives. We want to welcome you to Full Frame, Nigel. Thank you. What was it like? Because I imagine there's a lot of people who, A, either want to be rock stars or at least be around rock stars and be able to take... I mean, you sound like you have the dream job. I do. I can be around rock stars and I don't have to fall over. <laughs> you know? Um, no, but, it, but it, it, it's a thrill. I mean, as a, as a photographer or even as a just, just a, you know, uh, just a person going to a rock concert and being in front of the audience, in between the audience and the stage, and especially a big show, and you're right there, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. But your trajectory has a, it takes an interesting turn. You're, you're here in Southern California, and you decide to document this candidate for office, and suddenly it, it, you're, who you're shooting changes dramatically. Tell the story. So I was, I was in L.A. for about 25 years, here in L.A., and I was taking pictures of rock bands and movie stars, and, and uh, I was a photographer for some fashion companies, uh, Von Dutch and whatnot, and um, I kind of, I don't want to say got bored with it, but I, I wanted a new challenge, so I decided to get into um, the concept of California uh, leadership. Uh, California is one of the most powerful places in the world, and um, I decided to jump into L.A. politics, and I, uh, I documented a race for uh, L.A. city attorney. And I documented a very specific candidate. It turned out he won, <laughs> you know, and uh, ended up being in the office with him, uh, at City Hall. And one of the one of the issues that they were taking on happened to be Skid Row and homelessness. Homelessness. But uh, homeless people, after a while, can become part of the scenery. You kind of just walk by them. You don't recognize them. You don't interact with them. In many cases, you don't want to. Um, and you end up in Redding, California, which is dramatically different. For people who don't know, Redding, California couldn't be more different than L.A. Mm -hmm. And people were talking to you about the homeless <coughs> issue, and you're like, what? Yeah, so I uh, moved up to Redding, California to raise my daughters and uh, uh, opened up a photography studio in downtown Redding. And uh, Redding is kind of idyllic uh, compared to downtown L.A. And uh, one of the first things somebody said to me was, well, you've got to be careful of that homeless problem. And I was looking around, I was going, what homeless problem? I mean, compared to Skid Row, I'm like, what? And so it just kind of struck me as bu uh, a little bit of a bullying um, process. So I decided I was going to take a couple of homeless people from around the park and bring them into the studio and photograph them like I would a rock star and interview them like I would a rock star. And so the whole idea was just to take, take maybe four or five of them from around the corner. And... Uh and you happen to mention this to somebody at the newspaper, and suddenly it goes one step further, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, great guy up there named Silas, and we were having a, a conversation about something completely different. And I just happened to mention in passing that I was going to be doing this homeless project, and uh, didn't think anything of it. And next next day, and well, you're leaving out a key part of this, what? which is the number. It well, wasn't five, uh, was it? It wasn't five. <laughs> but so, so the next day, the, the newspaper called and said, we understand you're doing a homeless project. I'm like, yeah. And, well, we want to interview you. I'm like, okay. Like, must be a slow news day, you know? Uh, so they interviewed me, and um, uh, uh, Jenny interviewed me, and she, uh, I had one of those open mouth insert foot <laughs> moments. She goes, so how many are you going to do? And I said, 50. <laughs> and I, I remember when the word 50 came out, I'm like, how am I going to find 50 homeless people? And next day, you know, next day I was on the on the front page of the newspaper. Celebrity rock star photographer Nigel Skeet going to take uh, uh, rock star pictures of 50 homeless people. And it like freaked me out. I'm like, what did I just commit to? But that same day, I got a phone call from a great guy named Jonathan Anderson, and he's up. He's the uh, the director of the mission up there, and he goes, I love what you're doing. How how can I help you? And I said, send 50 homeless people. He goes, I have 300. I said, send 50. <laughs> 
So uh, that's that's what we did. The other feature of this is the interview. I mean, how do you go about formulating the questions? And what I mean, going in, everybody has preconceived notions. What did you think you were going to get, and what blew you away? I, to be honest with you, I had no idea what I was going to get, and I'd, I, I really had no idea what I was doing. And I really thought it was going to be a, a one-off thing. You know, I. Um, I simply wanted to create some uh, sense of relatability for the community towards the homeless. Like, let's, let's instead of them and us, let's, let's create some kind of uh, bridge where we can relate to one another. They, they wear what they wear. We don't change their clothing. They get hair and makeup. Um, Bethany uh, Hill does hair and makeup, and she's been with me since day one. She does amazing. And the whole idea for that was um, the guys don't really need a lot, like you and me. <laughs> But some of the women and some of the girls, you can tell, they, they haven't been pampered or made to feel beautiful in a long time or ever, okay? Uh, to sit in the chair and have yeah. somebody fawn over them. And that was amazing. And then we do, did the, uh, the, the photo session. And uh, it, was, it was great, you know? I treat them like a rock star, try and pull out their, their self-expression. And uh, then we did the interview. Uh, and at that point, it was our, our uh, our crew or people who were helping me who were doing the interviews. And I specifically decided when we do the interviews to not, the questions would have nothing to do with why they're homeless. Because that's not something we can relate to. So the questions were going to be a, a very straightforward conversation that you and I take for granted. The questions were a simple inquiry as to who are you. There were questions like, what's your name? Where are you born? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite band? What's your favorite food? Uh, what's your favorite place you've been to? What inspires you? Do you have any interesting talents? Uh, just normal questions. And at that moment, that's when I realized there was some magic there. Because the ones that were actually getting the transformation the most at that point were the ones asking the questions. Mm. Right? Because in their mind, they were talking to a homeless person, and all of a sudden, right in front of their eyes, that homeless person, that nameless, faceless homeless person turned into, some, turned into somebody I have something in common with. That's my favorite movie, too. I love that band. I've been there. I can play the guitar, too. You know? And so all of a sudden, that, you saw that, that sense of relatability just, ha just happen. And for those who were participating who were homeless, you could tell right away that they were feeling respected. Right? So that, that combination there was, was quite magical. So. Um after that event, I mean, you must have been really high, I would think, you know, like, wow, what have I done here? Um, talking to everybody about it afterwards, God, I had, I had no idea this person loved this movie. I mean, what was that night like, that first night? I mean, there must have been a high well, associated was, with well, it. Um, after the, after the, the, the pictures were done, the same journalist called back and she goes, so when do we get to see the pictures? Are you going to have a gallery exhibition? I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, sure. Let's have a gallery exhibition. <laughs> a gallery exhibition. Okay. And then um, I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, Nathan, at the Civic Auditorium. It's the largest concert venue in Reading. It seats about 2,000. And he goes, you know what? We should have a gallery exhibition of your pictures here. I'm like, great. Let's have a gallery exhibition of the pictures. You almost sound like you're on this runaway train. You're not even at in control that point, of it. I, I was not in control. What an experience, huh? So we had the gallery exhibition. We had all 50 pictures hanging up, their interviews, and we had our homeless, uh, and a whole bunch of our uh, homeless rock stars at that point show up. And we had about 300 people from the community show up. So they came and they saw the pictures, they saw the interviewers, and they got to meet the people. And just barriers were broken. And I thought I was done. At that point, I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, one-time thing. Let's, let's just move on and go take pictures of, you know, Rocks or uh, yeah, flowers. Or flowers, bridges, whatever. <laughs> and then um, a funny thing happened, you know, like a few weeks later, I just got like an unsolicited message from um, somebody's mother. It turned out to be Jesse's mother, somebody's mother saying, you know, thank you, that was amazing. Uh, you know, you made our daughter, you know, feel like a rock star, blah, 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 and we have our daughter back. You know, she ended up going back home to Washington State. And then I got another message from, uh, from another one. Another one. She said, oh, that was amazing. I felt great. You made me, f you, you gave me a sense of hope and self-esteem. And I'm back in Florida now, getting my life back. And then another one went to North, North Carolina. And, you know, it's like, what, really? Like, could it be that easy to just, like, inject a little self-esteem and self-worth into people? And the answer is yes, it's that it's easy. That, it was that easy. And, and 
suddenly it's it's your life's mission in a way. Something you kind of thought, well, I'll just do this, and it's a one-off. Now it's become much more than that, hasn't well, it? Well, so the first time we did that, you know, those those who were homeless at the mission, they showed up because of the pizza. <laughs> okay, they're like they're not, they didn't know what it was. They're like, fine, the guy's taking pictures, but there's going to be pizza. Let's let's do pizza. <laughs> But after the first, after the first uh, 50 we did that, people started asking, so when are you going to do it again? When are you going to do it again? I'm like, what do you mean do it again? You know? So um, I, I like, okay, so I set up a second one, a second event. By that time, it, it, it did, uh, transformed into Homeless rock stars. the actual branding of it, the name of it, and it, the whole thing just kind of fit. And so I did, a, did another event, a little smaller, maybe uh, 20, 25 people. <clears throat> <clears throat> and this time, I actually brought members of the community in to do the interviews. So mm -hmm. I brought members of city council, uh, business leaders, uh, TV people, radio people, uh, um, to come in and conduct the interviews. So when, when these homeless people came in, they got hair and makeup, chisel away at their, their defenses a little bit, and then I did my, my rock star photo session with them, uh, made them feel good, extract those, their self-expression, and then they got interviewed. Okay, and that was amazing. Okay, because let's be honest. When, when do you ever see a member of city council asking a homeless person, "What's your favorite movie?" One of the things our viewers probably are unaware of is this team starts very small. There's you. There's hair and makeup, but now there's a caterer, and that's mm -hmm. a key component and a great story. Tell it for us. Yeah. So that's Jesse. Uh, Jesse was actually one of the first. Uh, people in our in our in our very first homeless project, our, our, our first photo session. She was 19, and um, uh, you know she's now our poster child. She's not a poster child, but um, uh, she's the one who ended up going home to Washington State, back to her, her family. And uh, uh, remember, by interviewing her, that one of her greatest accomplishments was getting a full ride scholarship for baking. So we just kind of stayed in touch. And when this thing started to take off, I asked. Uh, uh, um, asked her if she was still into the whole culinary thing. She said, yeah. And I said, well, how would you like to be part of our team and take care of catering? And she said, absolutely. What do you hope to uh, do as far as furthering the conversation on this issue? And what changes have you seen? I mean, we're talking about the changes within, you know, someone who's homeless. But you've changed the community and how they view the homeless, too. Um, they're not part of the scenery anymore. Well, that is the key. If you really want to solve the homeless problem, the community is the one that needs to fix it, not those who are homeless. When somebody becomes homeless, they disconnect themselves from the community in a superficial, artificial manner, brick and mortar. The community disconnects them uh, psychologically and emotionally, but yet, but yet expects them to earn back that connection. All right. So what we do at our events is really simple, actually. At that moment, we represent the community. Okay, we represent the community, we bring the community in, and it's the whole rock star thing. And at that very moment, we actually repair that psychological and emotional connection. Okay, we, we can repair that right there on the spot. And it, and it opens up the possibility of a dialogue. And it opens up the possibility of the person who's homeless to start down that path of fixing that artificial disconnection. So That's what it. is it inside you where people would turn away from the homeless, where you turn towards them and help to change their lives and the community's <laughs> way of looking well, at look, them? Well, there's a noble cause and a selfish cause. Okay? So yes, noble cause is obviously you want to you know, help people out. And, um, uh, uh, but the, the selfish part, too, is um, uh, they're the underdog. I want to help the underdog. All right? uh, Rock stars, by nature, have always been the underdog. I mean, if you take Mick Jagger, you know, uh, ever since the beginning, people were saying, yeah, your hair is too long, your music's too loud, go get a real job, blah, 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 you'll never make it. You know, Lady Gaga, even though she's one of the biggest stars in the world right now, people are still saying, yeah, you'll never make it, and go get a real job. Homeless people are the underdog, the ultimate underdog. That's why it's a good match, you know? Rock stars and homeless people, it's like a, it's a good match. They're both the underdog. I, I said earlier, this is a runaway train. You don't really have any control over it, no. uh, which it just keeps going and going and going. Yes. But if you were to look into the future, where do you see it going? So the goal really is to go on tour with this thing and to do one major city, at least one major city every month, uh, for, uh, at least for the next two years. So we have, uh, we want to do homeless rock stars events in like Seattle, 
and Portland and San Francisco. We've been, we've been asked to go to Colorado. We've been asked to go to Detroit. We've been asked to go to Florida. Uh, people are now starting to reach out saying, hey, can you come do this in our city? <laughs> so we're like, okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's figure that out. Well, so, Well, Nigel, it's been a delight talking to you. Uh, folks in Reading, you're probably not going to see him for a while. He's booked for quite a while to come, I suspect. This is great what you're doing, and the Thank best you. of luck to you as you move forward. Thank you.